Next question is from Phoebe's Cray K. I just did a week of steep mountain trekking and realized I have undertrained endurance. I currently lift weights three to six days a week. How do I program endurance or uphill trekking training into my workouts without sacrificing muscle growth? Is this possible? So one of my one of the best ways I can illustrate kind of what I'm about to communicate is like when you play a video game and you pick your character. So you got the character on the screen. Right. And then next to the character, there's all these attributes, right? Yeah. It's like strength, stamina, speed, strength, speed, strength, you know, whatever, stamina, mm. you know, flexibility, resiliency. resilience. Yeah. And you can adjust each one. But if you move one more over to make it stronger, you take away from the other ones. Right. That kind of represents uh, your body's physical performance. The more endurance I train for, the less maximal strength I'm going to have. Okay, so th those tend to be, although they can help each other, sometimes they can be inversely related, especially when you start to look for high levels of performance. So if you're tr if you're like really into resistance training and it's all about muscle and strength, a little bit of endurance is going to help you. You need to have enough endurance to be able to perform your resistance training exercises. But if you start to train for more endurance or endurance gets gonna, that's going to give you stamina for endurance-related activities like trekking or cycling or running, you're probably going to take away a little bit of your ability to gain strength and muscle. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's whatever you prefer. Some people like to be extreme in one and not in the other. Some, there's, there's power lifters that like to be super, super strong, could care less about being able to run a mile or hike 15 miles or whatever. Um, and then there's the opposite. There's people that, look, they just want to be able to cycle for 50 miles and really don't care about squatting 300 pounds. So, And then there's people who like to be somewhere in the middle or a mix of them. You have to decide for yourself what's going to give you the best quality of life, what do you enjoy, and train accordingly. Now, based off of what you said, you lift weights three to six days a week. If you lift weight three days, uh, th weights three days a week, then two days a week of trekking, it's fine. Good, yeah. If you lift, if you want to do more stamina, then I would go three days of trekking, two days of weights, or four days of trekking, one day of weights. You know, then that's mostly endurance, right? So that's kind of how you want to measure it out. Six days a week of resistance training, you're not going to have much room to really train uh, lots of stamina endurance. It, you you might run the risk of overdoing it if you do that. But at the end of the day, you do have to assess like how much you're willing to sacrifice in in those two different pursuits because they are different. And uh, like you highlighted, it's 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 one of those things where uh, I, I know people want to have it all. And, you know, I want to be super lean, but I want to be humongous and jacked like all, all at the same time. And I want to be able to uh, sprint, you, you know, uh, a one minute mile, whatever, like whatever. the Wow. Yeah, it's really fast. Um, <laughs> that was a great example. Um, you know, there's some people out there that might want that. You know, like, uh, that would be pretty cool, actually. Uh, but yeah, you, you. But the thing is, like, you're always going to be sacrificing on, on one end of the spectrum versus the other uh, in order to get closer to the the specific goal that you have. So you just have to be a little more specific with your goal and understand, uh, you know, what that outcome looks like. I, I really think it's. Um, our own insecurities about our body and stuff that keeps us uh, from committing one way or the other. Yeah, or enjoying it. Yeah, right. So I love this. Like, I, I, I don't know. Out of the three of us, I probably move the most out of modalities, I think, uh, out of us. Man, we all do it pretty good, but I think I, I do this a lot. He's got commitment I, issues. Eh, I'm just better. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I just like to, yeah, I'm just, I'm just better at this, you know? Yeah. So, no, what I mean by that is like, you will uh, you'll see m uh, my body change a lot because of what I'm focused on and um you know whether it was swimming for a while or mobility or chasing sal for PRs or getting on a stage and presenting my physique i mean all four of those are extremely different goals and if i put a lot of energy in any of them they take away from the other three yeah and so uh, I, and instead of like kind of you know, putting one foot in and one foot out in each one of them, I just fully commit. Like, I'm going to be the mobility guy. And part of being the mobility guy is I don't give two shits what I look like on stage or if Sal can out deadlift me. That's not part of the goal. The goal is I want to become the most mobile version of myself. And so my commitment goes all there. And do I know that doing that, I'm going to not look as aesthetic as I did as a bodybuilder or be as strong as I was trying to chase Sal with deadlifts? Of course. But that's not the goal right now. The goal, and what I know is that overall, when you look at your uh, your training journey, not just this small focus for six months or a year or whatever you decide to do it. 
over the total journey, they they all really, really help each other. And it's all going to complement my overall fitness. It's not like I can't go after, like I can't, I can be a mobility guy, like hardcore for a whole year, lose a bunch of that, you know, sexy muscle, lose a bunch of that strength. And then all of a sudden after that year go, all right, now I want to go after being strong as hell again. And it'll actually really benefit me. I'll probably mm -hmm. feel a lot better. I may even reach a new PR going back to it. It's okay. And it's, and I think you're better off when you set new goals like this is committing to it. It's just a healthy relationship with, with your body and with exercise. You're having fun with it really is, is what it's all about. Whatever that means for you. I think that's the important message here. Whatever it means to you, have fun with it and enjoy it because what you're looking at is a lifetime of fitness. You know, you, it, that you made a great point, Adam. You said, don't look at it like su such a short period. Totally true. You know, if you're lucky and blessed, you're going to live a long life. And in that long life or part of living a long life is being active, taking care of your body. Stop looking at things so, so narrow minded. Will you lose a little bit of strength and muscle if you start to focus on trekking? Maybe, probably a little bit, but guess what? You'll get better at trekking. You'll enjoy something else. Yeah, and you're going to be, you're going to be not going to be less healthy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. going after all these different pursuits aren't are going to make you healthier by changing it up. You're you'll be healthier than the person who's always trying to do the same thing and fighting with their body. Like uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I'm not afraid to go I'm too afraid to go too far in this direction in fear I might lose a little bit of muscle or lose a little bit of strength. It's okay. Like overall, you're you're being active and you're 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 seeking novelty and you're changing things up and you're challenging your body. Uh, like these are all good stresses that you're adding, and you're only going to get better overall, and, and it's only going to improve your lifelong journey of it fitness. Makes life more interesting, right?